We're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel on Think Tech, and today we're going to do Community Matters with informed citizen Carl Campania, who incidentally is a host on um, what? What's the name of your show? Uh, Mover Shakers and Reformers, Politics in Hawaii. Okay, and he's got a lot of great thoughts about what's going on, a valuable contributor to the public conversation. <clears throat> today we're going to talk about Trump Week. We're going to make this a Trump Week show, which we do from time to time. Uh, Trump Week eh, in the first and second weeks of July 2017. We're going to look at what he's been doing and what that means and try to interpret it and even predict what, what will happen in the future. And one thing, Carl, you mentioned a minute ago was that uh, NPR tweeted the Declaration of Independence. Why and what happened? Uh, yesterday, NPR, um, as, as, I don't know if they've ever done this before, but uh, they, they're utilizing multimedia. And Twitter is one of the uh, sources and resources. Obviously, we know the president uses that. Um, but what they did was they decided to, without commentary. They decided to tweet out the entire Declaration of Independence. It's not inappropriate on, ele on not Independence inappropriate Day. On Independence Day, exactly. That's all they were doing. They were tweeting out, by the way, here's the Declaration of Independence. That itself is not necessarily remarkable. The remarkable part is where many, I don't know how many, but many Trump supporters decided that they were going to jump on that and comment through Twitter Criticize and, and other it. means, criticizing it because they believe that it was an attack on President Trump. Revolution against Trump. Revolution against Trump is what they thought NPR was calling for. The level of ignorance in this country is fantastic. Uh, it, is, it is not selective <clears throat> ignorance. It is decided, determined ignorance. <laughs> if you want to be ignorant, you can do it. You can. Not hard. You have the power. <laughs> but let's talk, about, let's talk about these letters that came. The letters that sought the voter rolls in all 50 states the last few days. Two letters. Yes, uh, and actually only one letter was talked about last week. There were actually two letters. One by the, the Presidential Voter Fraud uh, or Election Fraud uh, Commission, uh, the Presidential Commission uh, that's being headed up by uh, Mr. Kobach. Um, he sent out a letter to all of the states from his commission. Um, and then the second one, which wasn't talked about much and was only brought up earlier today uh, that I saw anyway, from the Department of Justice, Mr. Jeff Sessions himself sent a letter out to all of the states. They were basically asking for the exact same information, and that is all information, all personal information, and everything that can be gathered from the entire voter rolls from state to state, from all 50 states. That, that amounts to all hundreds of millions of Americans. That, that amounts to millions and millions of Americans, many of which don't even vote. But yeah. Ah, right. Voter rolls include people who don't necessarily don't vote, necessarily too. Vote. That's the whole population, effectively. So, so what does this mean? Why did they do that, Carl? Well, okay, the commission itself, the, the Voter or Election Fraud Commission itself is there because of earlier this, this year, uh, President Trump declared that he would have won the uh, popular vote if it were not for the millions and millions of illegal yeah, votes. With three to five million three people five had million. voted fraudulently. Exactly. And, and everyone consulted said, that's poppycock. There's no evidence of that at no all. That. So he goes ahead, you know, with the ultimate hubris, and he establishes a commission to look into it. Correct. And the guy in the commission? Um, I don't remember his first name, but his last name is Kobach. And the interesting thing about him is, I think he's from Kansas. Uh, he actually himself has been uh, fined for activities related to voter fraud. So now he's the person in charge of gathering the data on voter fraud, I guess. Yeah. And he also is a person who said there has been no voter fraud. In the past, he has said there has yeah. been no voter and fraud. With respect to this election in 2016, yeah, he said he, that. He's, he said that. He did say that at one point, that there is no indication that there was widespread voter fraud. Yeah. Um, but he seems to be an expert in that area, uh, having been fined for voter fraud. <laughs> um, so therefore, they, the president put him in charge of looking into it and finding those three to five million votes. You know, and your tax money is going to fund this cockamamie commission. Yes, it is. We are the whole thing is a goose chase. Yes, it is. It's, it's a distraction, and we'll talk more about distractions Absolutely. in a minute. Absolutely. The other letter, so that in itself is preposterous, and what I'll add is at least 41, if not 44 states so far have said outright, no, we're not giving you any voter information. Don't worry all. about the other ones, though. Well, any of them giving them. I'm happy that 44 of the 50 yeah. have said no. Well, you can see an immediate reaction. It's impressive. Yes, yes. So six are still out there. I'm not sure what they're waiting for. Um, so, okay. Hawaii has said no. Hawaii has... Uh, Ige, or is that still Governor out there? Ige, no, Governor Ige put out a statement saying that we have not been asked for anything, but if we were asked for something, we probably wouldn't give it to them. 
Good for him. That was Ige's statement, yeah. Governor Ige's statement. So, um, so that was that letter. Now, that letter itself is it's has got its own unfortunate um, repercussions on that one, and we'll see if anything ever comes of that. The other letter, which is actually more um, more insidious and perhaps more damaging, is the one from the Department of Justice. That letter was based on the National Voter Registration Act of 1993. Uh, based on that act, they're calling for the exact same information, all of the voter information, personal information and so forth, from state to state to state, uh, in order to make sure that everything is on the up and up from the voter rolls. And they're utilizing that act because within that act, well, first of all, let's start with the basis of that act, the purpose of that act, was to help register more people to vote. But there is language in that act that says, if they're not actually eligible to vote, here are some ways, here are some tools or techniques in order to kick people off the voter roll. So there's actually language in that act to kick people off the voter roll. So Jeff Sessions and the Department of Justice is using that act as leverage to gain the information so that they can proceed with voter suppression on mass. That's very, very scary, Carl. It's, yes, it's beyond scary. It, there are words, other words that we will get to later, uh, that, that, that is actually, it's beyond scary. It is actually something that we need to, as a country, recognize, and that all people, I don't care, Democrat, Republican, Independent, Green, or I'm oblivious and have never cared about politics in my life, need to recognize the ramifications of that. Yeah. So you take these two letters, mm -hmm. Um, both from questionable figures, but both working for Trump, for sure. Absolutely. Okay, and they go out and they, they have a dampening effect on, on voting. They, have, they, they sort of signal this, the federal government, you know, we used to like the federal government. The federal government is, is intending to suppress voting. Yes. But we also have other issues about voting. Yes. What are they? Well, there has been for years, a couple of decades or, or more, we've been talking about voter suppression. And a lot, oftentimes it has been targeted towards uh, urban inner cities, um, but more and more it's being looked at in, in larger perspective as, as really the, the people have, have really uh, dispersed through a number of areas. So the, there are voter suppression actions that have been going on for years. And what is included in that is the requirement for very specialized and difficult to obtain voter IDs. You must have an ID, a very specialized ID, or an ID that's going to cost you money because you have to get on a bus, take the day off of work, and travel all the way to this one place. Just make it hard for you. Make it hard for you to get the ID so that you can actually register to vote. Especially if you are in the poverty zone. If you exactly. have no money, you can't afford to do the things you need to do to vote. Exactly. Exactly. So that's one voter suppression technique. Um, there are other uh, suppression techniques that have been used as well, employed as well, in various ways similar uh, to that one. Um, and then you have the district gerrymandering. It's happening. That is currently happening. And first of all, do you know the etymology of the term gerrymandering? No, tell me. Okay. The term gerrymandering comes from the fifth vice president of the United States. He was vice president under James Madison. Um, his name was Elbridge Gerry, G-E-R-R-Y. And he established the idea of gerrymandering the district. So what a great contribution. After him. <laughs> so he goes down into the annals of history. Yes, he does. Down. Down. Being the operative word. Definitely yeah. down. Uh, having been the one who initiated redistricting. So Republicans are trying to do this right now. Oh, absolutely. And it has already been done in multiple states. And there have been a number of court cases uh, on the state level and federal level. Some of them have already passed and gone through and have been working their way up the ranks. There's one in particular that's happening at the moment that the Supreme Court of the United States of America has agreed to hear, and that is the case in Wisconsin. So that case will be heard, I believe, this fall. In the October they, term. In the October term. Well, they will review the gerrymandering claims in Wisconsin. This is going to be an important case. A very important case. And it will the define standard. the court. It will show us what's yes. going on in the court. It will define the court. It will define the direction for the country from this point forward with regards to gerrymandering. Yeah. It will, if it goes the way uh, the Republicans want, it will give them the full authority to redistrict everything 
so that they are basically redistricting the Democrats out. Manipulate the vote. Manipulate the vote. Manipulate the vote. Because I believe this is the only way that they can actually win in the coming year. Yeah. And let's not forget that there is significant evidence out there that the Russians, I mean, I think it's sort of generally accepted, the Russians through social media and email and otherwise, electronically, if not in other ways, um, tried to manipulate, did, did manipulate the vote. You know, I suggested that Hillary Clinton would have won had they not done so. And, and the, um, you know, the, the Russians were manipulating the vote in Trump's favor. And here's the thing, I believe, just me now, that Trump knew it and agreed to it and encouraged it. Maybe it was part of it. And that he is doing everything in his power to distract and delay and obfuscate the current attempts at investigation, which we haven't heard much about lately because we've been distracted by so many issues coming from Trump. Well, the good news there, I mean, first of all, okay, uh, I, you're not alone in your belief, first of all. I agree with you, uh, but there's a lot of evidence that needs to come out for that. And one thing to understand with regards to the investigation, whether it's in the congressional committees or in the special committee, they usually take 12 to 18 months to go through this process, no matter what. Mm. You're so, more confident than I am, Carl. I, what, I'm, what, I, what I'm choosing is to be more confident in the process and, and in hopeful, positive conclusion, rather than not. Um, knowing that well, it's only been technically five, six months. Yeah, but everything Although we've heard, everything we've heard has been dousing these investigations. Or somehow disrupting them, you know. They, they've tried to. And, and remember too that the, the Republicans control Congress, and they yes. can control these investigations too. Yes, only no. the only one they can't control is Mueller. Is Mueller? That's right. Although they're trying to, and they're talking well, about. Well, Trump is going to fire him after a while. Give him they're, a chance, well, and he will fire him. Everything they're doing is 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 supposed to put pressure on him to give the result they want to end it. They know there's nothing here. We're going to end it. They're trying to put that pressure on. They're threatening to fire him to make sure that, you know, try to get him to, I mean, that's all that he, they're trying to manipulate it. That's obstruction of justice. It's, and that's one of the cases now. See, understand that, that there's an investigation into the potential collusion. There's a criminal <clears throat> investigation into collusion and obstruction. There is a separate case being brought up to investigate what and how many aspects of corruption may have been, uh, uh, I guess, employed. So there are multiple investigations going on, criminal and otherwise, to just determine what happened and what do we do from there. One of the biggest pieces of the criminal investigation is looking into Trump's finances and how he has tied himself globally and also to Russia, and in what ways he actually may be mm. uh, unduly influenced. Well, the FBI hasn't, hasn't had a replacement director yet, huh? Um, no. No, and, and many agencies have not had replacement uh, executives. Oh, no, no. Well, and, and he hasn't been appointing people. No. Even the U.S. attorneys that he fired, he hasn't replaced, he hasn't replaced them. them. So, you know, what you have is uh, a government that is sort of limping along, where they, there's th that management level has not, has not been populated. No. And it gives, in my opinion, it gives Trump greater power when he dismantles all of these agencies by not appointing the people who lead them. Okay, that's, that's one element of what he's doing. But there are other elements. He's at war with the press. He's at war with the intelligence establishment. He's, gee, I think he's at war with the country, myself. And all this leads to a theory that you and I should discuss right after the break. And it's the theory of coup. 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 We'll be right back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search diveheart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk to God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck, dedicate yourself and you can find yourself.
Domingo, we're back here in Community Matters. So we're talking about Trump Week for this week. We're talking with Carl Campagna, who is an informed citizen. And we're talking about some of the things that emerged in watching Trump. So we talked about these letters and the suppression of voters. Uh, we talked about the gerrymandering Republicans that are involved in. Um, gee, and we, you know, we're talking about being at war, war with the, with, the, with the press, war with the intelligence establishment, um, folding into this isolationist mode in general. Um, gee, I mean, war with the whole country, really. And it suggests a coup, a slow coup, or maybe a, a ramp up to a coup, but it suggests profound changes in the way our democracy works or has worked. And we are at a very important turning point of some kind here. We are, we are. Um, and the reason I make reference to the idea of a coup is if you look it up, and it's been talked about by others, not just me, um, if you look at it and start going down the list of things that you need now, it's what Hitler did, it's what a number of other rulers did who became dictators and, and otherwise. You start going down the list of what you need to do in order to actually do a coup. And if it's a military coup, that's one thing. You just have the military come in and they take over. Well, he's just, trying to get close to the military, isn't he? he? Well, he's always been trying to get there. Fifty-four billion extra. That may yeah. not happen, but he's you know announced a policy that would attract a lot of military people. Right, and that is um, that is an. I don't think he's trying to do a military coup. He's also um, given greater authority to the to the brass to uh, change troop levels to act and to engage you know on the ground. For the Which, president of the United States to give his military autonomous control over military levels around the world is also, I believe, relatively unprecedented. Because let's also remember, it's not his job to declare war. It's the Congress's job to declare war. This is an also very important piece to understand. When you look at the Constitution, and this was actually brought up yesterday, um, I believe by a couple different other people, but when you look at the Constitution, the president is not the first job listed. The House of Representatives is the first job listed with the Speaker of the House. Well, again, you, you, go right, you go right down the line, the President is the sixth person mentioned, sixth position mentioned, and it's mentioned, the first mention of the President within the Constitution is when we impeach the President, this is the procedure which we will do. It. Interesting. But, you know, the, the President, um, uh, as it has evolved. The office has gotten more powerful, and that's dangerous. Yeah. And over many decades, it's become more powerful. But now we have a situation where the president um, makes critical remarks of the judges, of the judiciary. I find that unprecedented, and that's quite the remarkable. So-called judges. You know, that's, that's, that's a, an act against the Constitution to do that. Yeah. Uh, now, let me say this. When you look at it from this perspective, uh, the, the classic textbook corporate takeover, hostile takeover of any other, from one corporation to another corporation. What you do is you jump in, and as soon as you start to get your claws into it, you start going through all parts of that business, putting your vice president in charge of all of these different departments. Your vice president then goes through the process of dismantling each and every one of those departments so that that company ceases to exist, and it just gets enveloped into your company. That is a corporate takeover. In a governmental sense, that's a coup. In a governmental sense, and that's actually... That's a dictator. That's a dictator, and that's exactly what he's doing. He has put all of these people, people who are against the education department, against the energy department, going through every facet of it. He has not, he has fired and not refilled the Department of Justice and all of the lawyers. He has not reappointed, and he has fired a number of state people as far as diplomacy from around the world, and has not replaced with any of them. We don't have enough people out there to do anything. So what he's doing is crumbling the infrastructure that we have as a government globally, because he wants this isolationism, this nationalism. You know, it's so interesting that just yesterday, and I don't necessarily ascribe to this, but the, the, you know, there was a, a play, a, a performance organized in front of Ilani Palace. Um, and there were a lot of people involved in this. A lot of people came to see it. Uh, I was asked to come, and I went. But other other people in the community went. And and um, I must say, it was it was a study. Um, you know, Tom Coppin wrote a book about the overthrow. Right. This was a it was a play about the overthrow, about the inner workings and hidden mechanisms of the overthrow, and how those guys 
managed to overthrow uh, a, a, a monarchy that was the legitimate monarchy of the, of the place. Um, and, and it goes into some detail, as his book does, of exactly what kind of deception they pulled off in order to achieve this. Not saying, you know, that sovereignty is, you know, right or wrong, just that it was a phenomenal uh, examination of how they did this. And you know what? It sounds a lot like what's going on in Washington. You dismantle the existing structure. You, 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 um, you make it hard for people to vote. Uh, you make it hard for, for the Native Hawaiians to run for office and hold office. All these things, it's a whole accumulation. Yeah. And what they did, by the way... You discredit everyone else around They you. proclaimed, the they proclaimed Sanford Dole the president. There was no election of Sanford Dole. They proclaimed him. And so it was, you know, it was essentially for a while until, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, the Organic Act, uh, it was a dictatorship, essentially, by a group, an oligarchical dictatorship. Mm -hmm. And I am so worried that there's a parallel. I mean, if you, and we'll be discussing this on the show, not necessarily to, you know, push an agenda, but merely to find out the mechanics of how that worked, because it's relevant today, yes, how you, you know, you take one government and dismantle it and replace it with another government, maybe that the people may not actually agree with. Yes. And the people who are in charge of that government at the moment, currently as far as the United States is concerned, are all the Republicans who want nothing more than to make sure that they maintain that power, to pass the laws they want, to change our rights based on how they see fit, rather than a consensus and recognizing that half the country at least disagrees with some of what they're doing, let alone a lot of what they're doing, they don't care. They just want to put in their dictatorship of this is how things are going to be, and we are going to require that everyone in this free country, we're going to create freedom in this country to not have to worry about these other constraints that are tied to being free. Very, very scary, Carl. I mean, when you, when you put all this together and you talk about the possibility of the president taking more power than the Constitution would, would allow him and, and diminishing other uh, branches of government yep. in, in, in the process, uh, it, it doesn't speak well because he, his judgment is questionable, his, um, his, his values, his morality, his ethics, very questionable. My question and is to, to enhance his power, that's really not a good idea. My question is to what end? If they're doing this, and if the Republicans themselves who are, who are enabling and supporting him because they're not detracting from him or trying to slow him down, if the Republicans are in this for the same goal, what is that goal? Is that goal to eliminate all of the Democrats? Is that goal to have complete control over this country? And then what? Is it really so that the Republicans become the rulers of this country? Or is that connection that we've heard to Russia a bigger role, a bigger part of this whole conversation? Because we've heard talk about, yes, Trump's connections, and yes, Trump's administration's potential connections and financial ties here or there, but then we've heard that Trump, or I should say, Putin-tied entities have donated to Paul Ryan and to Mitch McConnell and to various other Republicans. So, where it's, exactly? Our system is so transparent that it can be manipulated this way, Absolutely. and it is being manipulated this way. I mean, for that matter, um, you know, Putin can hire public relations firms in New York, Washington, San Francisco to advance his, his position, make him look good. Yeah. And I'm, I would suspect that kind of thing has happened, maybe it's happening right now. Yeah. Get advice on how to deal with the American public opinion. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, you know, this is a pretty scary time, and, uh, and the Republicans don't make me feel any better about it. And for that matter, the Democrats seem to be you know, having trouble uh, in maintaining some kind of vision here uh, and in winning elections. Uh, so, um, you know, I, the country in my lifetime, actually, Carl, has never been as much at risk. And, and not only in the way he's doing, you know, dismantling the government, but in the way he's dealing with foreign policy and, um, you know, and, and the way things are working in the world. We live in a very, very global village now. But you said, you told me, that at the end of the day, and the end of the show, there's, there's a bright light. And I'd like you to take the next minute or two as your opportunity to try to persuade me and maybe others that there's a bright light here. It's not all um, a dark future. Okay, I will try. Uh, the bright light, because I'm of the type of person that if I can't see a positive future, if I can't see a pathway towards a brighter opportunity, um, 
then there's a real problem. So I need to look for that and then try to help make that happen, support that in some way. What I see is all of this effort that's going in at the moment for voter suppression and gerrymandering and all of these voter rolls that are being called for and all of this stuff that's being done at the moment is being done specifically, and this is the bright light, specifically because the Republicans know they're about to lose at least one chamber in 2018 and are in line to lose the presidency in 2020. The, that bright light, to me, is there, and it is obvious because they are spending so much time and effort and money to make sure that they can control the vote. Because if they cannot control the vote, they will lose. It was made very clear, and it was said plainly by the Montana candidate that, wait, 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 we don't want everyone in Montana to vote. If everyone in Montana votes, we will lose. He said that publicly. So what the Republicans know is the path they're taking at the moment is a narrow path that will most likely lead, without them gerrymandering and suppressing, to them losing mm. in 2018. So that's the bright light. We just need to make sure that we get out the vote, that we help our neighbors register to vote, and that we get them there. That's what we have to make sure of. Well, I, I hope you're right. Um, but, you know, it could be prophylactic. What I mean is the Republicans would do this even if they weren't concerned. And the Democrats, you know, would do it even if they were concerned. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a, a great disparity in the country. Uh, some, some people recently called it the Second Civil War between rich and poor, between all these diverse groups, between these polarized uh, viewpoints all around the country. And it's very sad that we have that. I mean, let's take care of each other. Let's be together on these things. We have, we've had high moral values. Those are being questioned now. And well, we've given up the moral ground for the, for the, globally. Yeah. We've just given up the moral ground globally. Yeah. We've given up leadership globally to China primarily. Yeah, yeah we have to come back. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's do make America great again, Carl. Let's get back to the America that was great. Yeah. Thank you, Carl. Carl Campania, informed citizen here on ThinkTech. Thanks Concerned so much. Citizen. Concerned and informed. <laughs>